The reading today is from the book of Galatians, third chapter, beginning at the 27th verse. As many of you, as were baptized into Christ, have closed yourselves with Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Jesus Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs to the promise. The word of the Lord. Our congregation is progressively reading through the entire New Testament. We're also using the, those same readings that we assign for each week as the basis for our preaching text. And so you can tell from hearing the text from Galatians, that is the, the book of the Bible that we are in right now. It's a Paul, it's a book written, letter actually, written by Paul to the Christians at Galatia. If you would like to, to pick up a copy of our schedule and read through the New Testament with us, you're more than welcome to do so. They're on a blue eight and a half by 11 sheet on the welcome table in the gathering area. The gospel reading for this morning is from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 8, beginning with the 31st verse. Would you please stand? Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered Jesus, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, if you've looked at all at the pulpit this morning, there's just a little bit of an odd collection of things. An odd thing, odd collection of parts of things. A gear, just a simple metal gear. It does have a part number on it, a simple metal gear. Anybody recognize it? A clue? It's a wheel? We'll find out in a bit. Recognize that? Football. Its label says, made in China, partially inflated in New England. <laughs> An outlet and its plate and a chunk of wood that looks vaguely like a shingle. All of them are parts. Parts. Just sitting there, they really don't do much of anything. We can identify them. Well, that's a gear that one of my sons, who is an engineer, was involved in design and making. They had a spare. It sits on my desk. Paperweight. Once in a while, I'll put my magnetic name tag on it. The wheel. Well, <laughs> If I don't get this put back in the right place, there might be somebody on the staff on Monday who's going to have trouble with their chair. A football, as long as it sits here, it's not involved in a game. And the shingle, as long as it's separated from all the rest, it serves no function, could possibly be firewood. But yet it's a part. If we put all of those things back in the places where they belong and what they are designed for, then this gear starts controlling and manipulating and, control and moving the, the boom of a utility truck in the right direction. So if you're moving around Sioux Falls and you see a, a utility truck with a boom and the boom is kind of wobbling back and forth and it seems to be broken, let them know I've got the spare part. For just the right price, I could part with that maybe or at least tell them who made it. 
The wheel, yeah, it should go back on something. It's not from a desk chair, I will tell you that. And the football, ah, if we throw that into a bunch of kids, there's going to be all sorts of people having a good time playing with it. The outlet, ground fault interrupter. It's a safety measure for places where there might be electricity and water. Once it's hooked up into a, into a circuit, it's going to provide safety. But sitting like this, it doesn't. And the same for a shingle. When it's combined with all sorts of other shingles, there is going to be that corporate effort to protect the interior of a building from rain and storm as long as they're all in their place doing their things. When all of you confirmants were baptized, you became part of the body of Christ. Like we illustrated with the letters C-H-U-R-C-H, some of you and I have talked about that. Who is the church? You are. And when we expanded the word church and added some other letters, we saw that we are surrounded by Christ, embraced by Christ. That all happened when your parents brought you to a baptismal font and water was poured over you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's when you became a part of the church. Now, in confirmation, in confirming your faith, you are boldly saying, I am part of the church and here is my function. And this is the group among whom I will serve and live and recognize and proclaim my Lord. You are no longer just simply parts. You are functioning. You have been for a long time. Take a look at the service projects that you've done in your confirmation work. Take a look at what those have taught you. Take a look at the way that you have related to one another in all sorts of things that you have learned and discovered through church school, youth events, youth group mission trips, as well as your confirmation classes. And look at this group of people that you have had as parents, mentors, examples, people leading the way by showing you what they do as functioning parts of the church. Each of us, each of us is part of the church, the body of Christ. When you and I were meeting, few of us talked about the matter of baptism being a spiritual birthday. Parents, I'm not going to tell you who said it first, but one of the confirmants and I were talking about Baptism as a spiritual birthday. And there was this almost instantaneous question, does that mean that on my baptism day, my parents buy me a gift? And I said, well, we could suggest that and see how far it gets. Parents, it's in your court. But yes, we should be celebrating their baptismal anniversaries as well as our own. At baptism, each of you were given a candle and someone said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your heavenly Father. Light that candle on the anniversary of your baptism. And if that candle burns down to just a stub, let me know and we'll find you another. It means you're celebrating that God has claimed you in the waters of baptism as his own child. He has made you part of the church. We can use that word church a lot, but we have to take a look at what it is that we mean when we say and hear that word. Canon J. John, obviously from his accent from England, has a few words that I would like you to listen to and watch. People often say to me, they say, Jay John, you know, what, what do you do? And it's always very difficult to know what to say. 
Because if I say to you that I'm a reverend, which I am, that <laughs> conjures up certain images in people's minds as to what I might be. <laughs> so I like to be a little bit creative in telling people what I do. I sat next to this lady on an aeroplane at Heathrow Airport and I said, hello. And she said, well, hello. And I said, where are you going? And she says, I'm going to Singapore. Then she said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Australia. I said, what do you do? So she told me. Then she said, what do you do? And I said, well... <laughs> I work for a global enterprise. She said, do you? I said, yes, I do. I said, we've got outlets in nearly every country of the world. <laughs> she said, have you? I said, yes, we have. I said, we've got hospitals and hospices and homeless shelters. I said, we do marriage work. We've got orphanages. We've got feeding programs, educational <laughs> programs. I said, we do all sorts of justice and reconciliation things. I said, basically. Basically, we look after people from birth to death <laughs> and we deal in the area of behavioural alteration. <laughs> she went, wow! <laughs> and it was so loud, her wow, loads of people turned around and looked at us. She says, what's it called? <laughs> I said, it's called the church. <laughs> If we are a follower of Jesus, wow. then we are part of a global That's enterprise. Right. But not only is it global, it's intergalactic because it includes everyone that's gone before us. Wow. <laughs> we are a part of the church. Indeed, we are the church. A global enterprise. God has entrusted to us the message of salvation that we may share it with others. The behavioral alteration that Canon J. John refers to, you know as well as I do. Altering our behavior. Paul, in writing to the Galatians, knew very well that he was writing to a group of people who were so focused on maybe their own behavior and earning their own way into God's goodness and kindness that they were forgetting that it was by God's grace that they receive entrance into the kingdom. John, when he was writing the gospel, was telling all, all about the way in which Christ came to, to die for our sins and redeem us from our sins. Christ has come in the hope of altering our behavior. Fellow sinners, we are indeed guilty. Even on this your confirmation day, you confessed your sins and you heard the words of grace as you will many, many times throughout your life and as you have already. Sin continues to rear its ugly head, grab a hold of us, embrace it, and embrace us. And sometimes we embrace it right back. And there's the problem. We sometimes willingly veer off that path that God has lit for us with His Word. And we are trapped and held by the very sin that we want so badly to escape. Our freedom, your freedom, comes from Christ. Your faith and your trust in Him allow you to hear and receive that marvelous gift that Sunday school teachers, youth group leaders, pastors, parents, mentors have talked about with you for years. You are free indeed because you are baptized, because Christ died for you, because Christ has said, you are mine. You are the church, the body of Christ, and Christ will use your hands and feet and voices as he has already been doing so for years 
to carry that same message to all who will hear, all who will listen, all who will see. In Galatians, Paul writes, As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for each of these confirmants, for the families of which they are part, for this part of the church in which they have learned and grown. We pray that you would continue to speak to them and to all of us and remind us that we are your body on this earth. In your name we pray. Amen.